And here we go. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Manager of Dataversity. We'd like to thank you for joining this Dataversity webinar, Moving from a Relational Model to NoSQL, sponsored today by Couchbase. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Or if you'd like to tweet, we encourage you to share highlights or questions via Twitter using hashtag Dataversity. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. Just click the chat icon in the bottom middle of your screen for that feature. And as always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of this session, and additional information requested through Throughout the webinar. Now, let me introduce to you our speaker for today, Andrew Oliver. Andrew is the Director of Product Marketing, Product Evangelism at Couchbase. He taught himself to code when he was just eight years old, and by 20, he was a DBA because he was the last one who knew how to operate the database and HP UX boxes. Now, he focuses on telling Couchbase's story to a technical audience, and with that, I will give the floor to Andrew to get today's webinar started. Hello and welcome. Thanks, Shannon. So today we're going to talk about how you can run a relational database schema on a NoSQL database. We use Couchbase for example, but the advice is generally applicable, minus that many NoSQL databases obviously don't support SQL. As mentioned, I'm Andy Oliver, um, and you can find me at, on Twitter at, at ACOliver. Um, you can also uh, email me at andrew.oliver at couchbase.com. Um, if you have questions and, and anything you want to follow up on. I want to keep this at a high level. We're going to go over the methodology to migrate and run an RDBMS application. We'll get a taste for the technical issues and differences. However, I'm not going to get mired in the details. So we're not going to go down into, you know, some of the differences on how indexes are handled and, and what have you. Um, just suffice to say that there's some additional sort of technical details that uh, that can affect you when you start doing more of the optimization um, type tasks. So we'll look at NoSQL. We'll talk a little bit about Couchbase. I want to look at some of our migration options and really why you choose the methodology we're covering today, specifically migrating without optimizing and then optimizing as needed. First, let's look at NoSQL. When all transactions were offline and people browsed or met in person to conduct any and all business, batching data and relatively low volume transactions were fine. These days, however, users look at hundreds of things before making a purchase and everything's online and mobile. Supply chains are monitored and managed in real time. Where's my package? Where did the problem occur? And everything, especially in manufacturing, emits data. So volumes of both reads and writes are way up. So people turn to NoSQL databases to make that happen. However, the first generation of NoSQL databases didn't do joins, they didn't do SQL, they didn't do transactions. People basically put up with them because they had to to meet some of their scalability and performance requirements, but they did their real work offline on mainframes and RDBMSs. Now with business changing more rapidly, uptime, re uptime requirements reaching 100% and everything moving online, this architecture is even more relevant. Moreover, now you need to analyze in real time. There's no more time to ship data over to another system, do the ETL, do some processing, and then do some analysis. Analytics generally must happen now. What, a, what is my situation today? Um, even if I'm doing some projections or whatever, I, I kind of want that to happen more real time these days. That's why newer NoSQL databases like Couchbase support SQL, joins, transactions, and in Couchbase's case, we even embed a, uh, an MPP. Um, if you're not familiar with an MPP, uh, Teradata and Netiza, those things are uh, MPP type uh, uh, databases. We're moving to an area, uh, to an era where NoSQL isn't just for your volume, but also for reliability and flexibility as well. The most popular kind of NoSQL database uses JSON documents to store and represent data. JSON is, the JavaScript, uh, is JavaScript object notation. It embeds key value pairs and arrays. It can embed sub-documents. It can represent numbers, strings, and booleans. 
JSON is supported by nearly every major language and platform and library. It's the language of the modern services of modern services on the internet. Even if your database doesn't support JSON, your application and application services are likely speaking JSON. A document is most analogous to a row in an RDBMS. Different NoSQL databases have different storage paradigms, but Couchbase stores documents in a bucket. However, a bucket is more like a database instance than a table. A table is most analogous to a set of documents with the same type, which we generally concatenate as part of the ID. So I can essentially represent my RDBMS tables on the left as sets of documents on the right. And if you look, you know, you can, you can see what's going on. One thing to note, though, is while RDBMS is generally enforced constraints, NoSQL databases support agility or schema on read, meaning I can add a field to a document or omit a field from a document. There are various reasons this is quote unquote better and better is in quotes. Um, but it does mean that any constraint enforcement moves the query or application layer. Another thing that is different is that generally timestamps are either a string, array, or number. Conversions uh, are handled at the query le uh, level. We recommend using epoch, uh, the, the number style, or Unix time, as it might be referred. Let's talk uh, about uh, Couchbase. Couchbase is a NoSQL database that supports transactions, SQL, and full text search. It is a memory first, shared nothing distributed architecture. What this means is that the default behavior is that you can read a write from any node, the write will be put into memory and replicated to at least one node. It'll be written to disk later. This is configurable. Um, but then your application moves on. Once, once we've got it in memory replicated, at least another node, your application moves on. If any node goes down, your clients don't care. They can just connect to a different node. Data reliability is assured through replication. I want to make, uh, I wanna make sh everyone, uh, sure everyone has a good taste of how SQL and JSON work. So I've kind of sprinkled SQL queries um, through the slides. And on this one, they're just window dressing. Um, on here, you see an insert statement creating, uh, you see creating an index, you see a couple of deletes. Um, we'll see plenty of selects uh, throughout. Um, but just to give you a little bit of a taste on what SQL and JSON might look like. Couchbase is one of the leading NoSQL databases. You can build the community version via GitHub. Uh, we also have a pro version and a, announced a cloud version, which you can sign up for. Couchbase can run local. You can run it on your own cloud or multiple clouds. It's rack aware, built on Kubernetes, all of that stuff. Um, you can also find up, sign up for a fully managed as a service offering. We're not gonna go into all the sort of system um, uh, and infrastructure type stuff today because um, we're focusing more on, on the SQL, on NoSQL topic, um, but, uh, uh, but suffice to say there's a, a a lot of options there, and it supports a multi, uh, modern multi-cloud, cloud-based architecture, as well as on-premise uh, with most people's uh, Kubernetes stacks. We're gonna focus on Couchbase server today, but Couchbase has a mobile offering in a gateway that allows local, peer-to-peer, -peer, and client-server edge applications. While we focus on mobile usage, building resilient applications is just as important for desktop and other types of applications as well. So whether it's a grocery store or a factory floor, if your connection to the cloud or your data center is severed and you don't want your application to cease function, um, even if it has to reduce capabilities, Couchbase has an offering that offers the same kinds of capabilities on a phone, desktop, embedded web server, and yet can sync to a database server and offers conflict res resolution and all the stuff you need to make this work. So if you need to create a resilient application that works even if your internet connection's dead, um, uh, but does sync and, and, and work together once it comes back up, then we've got, uh, we've got some stuff for you. 
Whether you're in the cloud or in a set of data centers, Couchbase supports high availability through replication and disaster recovery through cross-data center replication. This lets you support multiple data centers or multiple geographic zones for the, for the case of the cloud. This is highly configurable, but in essence, you can read and write locally and have the right data go to other geographies. Most applications that go NoSQL are Greenfield, but we've seen more migrations recently, and there are a lot of reasons for this. The number one reason is that there's an application that, while it works, now has to scale. Now there are new demands, whether it's because a cell provider wants to give users more visibility into their data usage and thus make the external service remote, uh, remotely available, or a grocer that suddenly has a lot of online orders, or a top financial company that has ever-increasing uh, ever increasing volume and is pursuing a more service-oriented and consolidated architecture, each kind of follows this general path, uh, pattern. Lots of change, more rapid change, more scale, but they need it to be more reliable. When we strategize, we need to think about some things. What kind of risk can we tolerate? What skills and expertise do we have? What is the cost of migration? What are our performance and scalability requirements? There are a lot of different options we have when pursuing this. Do we want to rewrite the whole thing? That's a lot of effort, a lot of risk. It does give us an opportunity to achieve the most optimal performance and scale. Another option is to migrate the database and totally rewrite the data layer in the application. This is less effort, less risk, but still quite a lot of effort and risk. Performance and scale is probably almost as good as rewriting but we've got, uh, we've got to consider the risk and the effort. We can keep everything uh, as is, but refactor our data um, uh, uh, and logic and RDBMS schema to a best practices schema. We're keeping our business logic, most of our data logic, but pursuing optimization up front. Still a fair amount of risk, still a fair amount of effort, a lot of optimization, a lot of performance. We can also optimize later, basically just migrate the table rows to documents, make a few changes to our queries as possible, make as few changes as to our queries as possible. Our initial performance and scale may not be great, but it'll work and it's low risk. Finally, we could just not bother optimizing it and host it. So really we're balancing performance and scale against our effort and risk. Generally, I see organizations doing more of a two or three than a zero or one. Uh, some maybe do four for applications that can be moved over just for consolidation reasons that the performance or scale requirements aren't very high. So we're gonna focus sort of on that, uh, that option number three, optimize later. So how do we migrate without de uh, denormalizing the data into a big document? First, we need a NoSQL database that supports SQL acid transactions and joins. We need to understand how the tables and rows relate to documents. There will be SQL dialect transitions similar to when you go between two RDBMSs, even if those two databases support, uh, support the ANSI uh, standard, anybody that's done this knows that they've got to make some changes. Once we get everything running, we'll experience lower performance on more service. We need to expect that upfront. So if we just do this transition, we don't do any optimizations, um, we'll, we'll probably have lower performance using more servers. Um, so let's set our expectations up front so people aren't like, wow, that, that NoSQL database wasn't very good. Um, moreover, when we move to distributed architecture, there's a different sweet spot. So for Couchbase, a key value lookup might be faster because we're going to do it out of memory. An index look, lookup on five rows not in the cache um, is probably slower than on a single server database. However, a query that hits lots of rows might be faster because we can pipeline it from multiple servers at once. I'm gonna say a lot of might and maybe because it depends on your topology, your data, and your application and how it uses the data. But we shouldn't expect the performance to be one for one in all cases. 
let's look at how things relate between your RDBMS and Couchbase. A set of type, uh, uh, typed like fields are analogous to a table. So what I've done here is I've got my relational table on the left, I've got a document on the right, and you notice the document has a type and that that type is also included in the ID. Um, I've got the same sort of ID as uh, on the left and on the right, so I've got a, a user, um, I've got a user ID that also includes the type. So this is basically, we've got a bucket, it contains multiple different documents, but this is analogous to a table. So a table is a document where type equals user, that's analogous to the user table in our RDBMS. A document is analogous to a row. Like name fields in a document are analogous to a column. A conventional relational model tries to have minimally redundant data. This minimizes storage, enforces a schema, does joins in memory on a single server. It also requires transactions to put Humpty back together again. So where in my document, I've got everything potentially in one document, I don't need a separate transaction just to put all of these different pieces of the entity together. Uh, I do have to do that on an RDBMS. A document's fairly denormalized. It generally aligns with how your application uses data. Normal single document reads and writes don't require transactions. This means fewer joins and fewer transactions. This, in short, scales better horizontally. For Couchbase, we query on a bucket. So when you see the from there, that's on the bucket. Um, remember, it's more like a database than a table uh, or a database instance than a table. What makes this a, a table is that we specify the type. These two queries do the same thing, one on an RDBMS, one on NoSQL. We do support, uh, uh, so keep in mind the differences. Uh, the table equals bucket plus type. You can have many different document types in a single bucket. The ANSI, there are ANSI joins and we do support other SQL uh, conventions, but there are some, uh, our, our NoSQL or our uh, SQL dialects called N1QL or NICL. Um, there are, are other sort of, JSONism is basically like unnest and nest when dealing with embedded documents. Um, indexes are more important on Couchbase. Um, there are other details that we're not going to go into great amount of detail today, but, uh, but there are other, other things to consider. But you can kind of get a taste for, for what this might look like. When you're creating an index, meta, uh, this meta keyword, allows you to refer to the field names. Um, when you look at the word GSI, that stands for Global Secondary Index, Couchbase has other types of indexes. Again, going to skip over some of those details today. A few more notes here. Uh, so changes within a document are automatically atomic. So what's that mean? This is, we don't need a transaction if we're just doing a bunch of changes on a single document. This is why when we say that you don't really need transactions as often in a NoSQL database, it's because you don't have to put together all the different tables together. Now, if we're just hosting our, um, our uh, SQL database one for one, we are gonna have to put tables back together. We will need transactions. And if you look on the right, this is uh, sort of standard Java code for doing transactions in an application. Um, changes to multiple do uh, documents without a transaction are not atomic. So if we are doing a query across several documents and then we're making changes across several documents, this is all not transactional unless we actually code in a transaction. Uh, Couchbase 6.5, the most recent release, includes a transaction API allowing multi-document transactions. And we support both synchronous and asynchronous. So if you're a developer um, and you've started doing more uh, event-based, reactive sort of uh, uh, coding style, I put the, uh, the synchronous code sample here in the slide. 
because I think everyone can look at this and kind of understand it uh, without understanding monads and all of that kind of stuff. But uh, we do support uh, the asynchronous version as well. So let's talk about, okay, we've hosted our, our we understand the difference between a table and a bucket plus a type uh, document. Um, so we understand that that's basically the bucket slash type document is uh, uh, analogous to a table. Um, uh, so we understand that, but um, uh, we've got our one for one hosted relational schema on, uh, on our NoSQL database. Well, let's talk about what we do now to optimize things. So we, we did that performance is, yeah, maybe we wanna make some changes. We haven't met our performance requirements yet. What do we do? So first thing to consider is that joining and transactions, joins and transactions are, are costly. Um, and that doesn't scale as well horizontally. Uh, horizontally. Um, our, remember our relational database was designed to scale up on a single node really well, doesn't scale as well horizontally. NoSQL databases are designed to let you just add more nodes as you need more, more scale and in many cases more performance. Your well-designed application code is a guide. So I said well-designed because, you know, if you're application designed poorly, well, it won't be a good guide for anything. But um, uh, if person contains addresses but looks up orders, well, that's a good hint that person contains addresses, should, address should just be contained in the person document, um, but that you might look up uh, orders as a second entity. So we might have an orders uh, type and a person type. We can look at our application code and kind of realize this. Um, one of the things when we're optimizing we should think about is when we go to RDBMS, we do a lot of sort of transition. We, we flatten things out. We create more pieces out of it. Um, uh, and, and that sort of gives us an idea of how we've sort of de-optimized to, to meet the semantics of a, a relational database that are different from our application. Um, when we look at our application, and we look at a NoSQL database because it supports a, a put together type, we don't have to do some of that work. So if we do less work, we've essentially optimized uh, things, if that makes any sense. Um, so think of in terms of entities. In the scope of your application, does this entity have a life cycle outside the thing that always references it? If you've come from the, a Java background and use Hibernate or another object relational mapping tool, you get the same sort of advice from your object relational mapping tool. And so that's a good sort of skill that sort of transitions uh, from a developer perspective. Can you reduce the number of explicit transactions required? So when we're trying to, to optimize this thing, can we, should we put something together just because it reduces the number of joins and transactions? Sometimes the answer is, hey, we're gonna put this together into one document um, because it'll reduce the number of joins and transactions. And have you met your performance and scale requirements? So it may be fun to think, okay, I'm gonna make this perfect um, NoSQL schema kind of setup, but if you've finally met your performance and scale requirement, well, you can stop. I guess that's generally the, the best advice for any sort of optimization scale um, effort is to have a performance and scale requirement in mind. I need to meet this many transactions per second. I need to make these things this fast. Uh, once you meet that, you can stop because you can always find more optimizations and, and what have you, you need to stop it. So have a metric in mind. So when we wanna reduce uh, joins and transactions, if we look at our, our setup, on one hand, I've got on the, on the left, I've got sort of this uh, relational setup here. So I'm doing a transaction, I'm updating the savings table, I'm setting some stuff, I'm updating the checking table, I'm setting some stuff. I've got two different tables here. Um, on the right-hand side, uh, on the NoSQL uh, side, I put these things together into one document. This is not a very realistic example, but it gives you sort of an idea. I put these into one sub-document, balances, savings, checking, um, uh, and so on. So I'm able to do one update, and I don't need to uh, have a transaction because I just do two 
updates on the same document. This reduces the number of transactions I need. This is when you're optimizing, you need to think, okay, well, could I just combine these things so that I don't need a transaction? I don't need a join. Um, if you're a DBA, you come from a DBA background, one of the first things you look at when developers send you a query is, is it complex? Can I simplify this query? Can I reduce the number of joints? Um, uh, can I make that, you know, a less complicated setup? And generally that's one of your first sort of operating optimization principles. That's the same sort of idea here. We're just looking at the object model. Uh, so you can look at your logical model, and if you guys are like saying, okay, logical model, physical model, blah, 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 um, and you think, wow, I like doing this in Irwin, well, I've got good news for you. Um, Couchbase is a partner with Irwin, and Irwin supports Couchbase, so if you are taking a relational model and you're trying to host it on, um, on a NoSQL database, Irwin's actually a pretty good uh, uh, place to start. So you might consider using Irwin to sort of reverse engineer your um, your uh, uh, relational model if you don't already have it in Irwin um, into a, a logical model, and then use Irwin to manage your physical model on Couchbase. So uh, something to consider when you do this. So look at your logical model. Look at what is your object in this. So one option we have is to embed things. So if we look at uh, our, our overall setup, we've got an order. An order has things in it. Uh, it has quantities of those things. We can put those together into a document. So for us, we, we took order, we embedded pay type, um, uh, which embeds product. We can also do embedding and referencing because, hey, our products sort of have their own life cycle that's independent of the order. So we may embed the ID of the product, um, uh, but store the quantity as part of the order. So we've got order, it has items, it references product, just like you would reference in a relational database, um, but we've got the quantity embedded in here. That might be in a relational database, we'd have a join table in the middle that would map order, uh, we'd have order, order items, and then um, uh, and that would reference our product type. In this case, we can embed basically that order items table, uh, if you will. So in, um, in a NoSQL database, you can have both embedded objects, but you can also have arrays. On the left-hand side, I've got phones um, and I've got home. Uh, on the right-hand side, I've got phones, but it's an array of objects and each one has a number, a type, and what have you. I could have an additional, I'd have a comma after the, um, after this, uh, uh, after the right-handed uh, bird bracket, if you will, and um, I'd have a comma there and then another open and close for the next phone. That wouldn't fit on one slide now, would it? All right, so what should we conclude? Well, migrate first, optimize later, reduces risk, um, while increases performance and scale over just hosting it. Joins multi-document transactions are more costly in a distributed architecture, so expect a one-to-one -one migration. If we just host and just change our SQL queries as little as possible, change our object model as little as possible, we could expect it to be slower on more hardware. Um, embed documents as an optimization. Queries can be converted um, noting Couchbase and JSON differences. So you're still gonna use your SQL skills, but you'll have to make some changes for the dialect and because JSON is different than a flat row. ACID transactions are available, but they're not as needed as often when we optimize our schema because we don't have to, it, when, we, when we have orders and order items and, um, uh, and product, we've got three tables basically, We've got to uh, we've got to have a uh, transaction just to map between orders and order items. If the order items are basically embedded in the order, then we don't have to have a transaction just to update it. Finally, have some performance and scale goals in mind. This is the part people skip. They're like, well, we never measured it. Well, measure it. Figure out what you're what you need. 
come up with a goal, even if it's a straw man goal at first. And once you meet that, stop. If that works good enough for your customers and, and what have you, then, then you're done. Uh, stick with it. So that's what I have. Thank you guys. Any questions? Andrew, thank you so much for this great presentation. Just to answer the most commonly asked questions, or if you have questions for Andrew, please feel free to submit them in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And to answer the most commonly asked questions, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Thursday with links to the slides and links to the recording of the session to all registrants. So diving in here, Andrew, um, are you indicating that we can that use something like Couchbase to replace the SQL database for highly transactional things like banking? I thought you need ACID in such a situation. Yes, and Couchbase supports ACID. So because Couchbase supports ACID, Couchbase supports SQL, you can use Couchbase as a uh, source of truth and in a transactional a highly transactional application. Um, and how uh, would you make your processing faster uh, RDB queries, store code, and optimization? How do you really compare, and do you have benchmarks? Uh, we do actually have some benchmarks on our website. Um, so if you go to, uh, go to our website and, or search for Alteros Couchbase, um, you, we have benchmarks against, I believe it is MongoDB, which is another NoSQL database, um, uh, Datastax, Cassandra, which is another type of NoSQL database, is a column family, and I think MySQL, um, uh, just so that you can get a taste. Obviously, you know the license for uh, the two most popular, uh, 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 you know, enterprise NoS uh, SQL databases prohibit you from releasing public uh, benchmarks, I believe. So you can find those to kind of get a get an idea, um, but. Again, this is like if I'm doing a, a single join with a short number of rows and what have you, um, and I don't have a lot of scale and I don't have a lot of uh, data, well, that probably will perform better on a single server, on a single computer, on a single CPU, on a single disk. Once I have scale and performance requirements, um, uh, then that won't perform as well on a single server, on a single CPU, on a single disk. So there are gonna be like, okay, well, I just did this simple query. Well, yeah, that for, that's gonna perform better on, on a flat file with grep, honestly. Um, uh, but when you get a more complex, uh, when you get a query that's going across lots more data, or you've got a query that's, um, uh, or you've got a lot of queries um, uh, and you require more scale and what have you, then our changes, then our, our requirements are different. So, in short, it'll perform better on sca uh, at scale on a NoSQL database. It'll perform worse at low end uh, kind of scale, um, with the exception of key value lookups uh, are usually in memory on Couchbase. And do you recommend migration to NoSQL for all types of business needs based on your use cases? So there's a lot of uh, different reasons people are migrating to NoSQL databases that go beyond the traditional. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a qualified yes, meaning, okay, you need to migrate your Microsoft Access database that has 10 rows in it and you're the only user. Um, well, probably not. Um, but if you're looking at your license fees going out, uh, uh, going crazy, you're looking at putting out more and more changes to your applications. You're looking for higher reliability. Um, uh, these might be reasons besides just performance and scale that you might consider migrating to a NoSQL database because you can have the same sort, you can have, you don't need Golden Gate and Data Guard and all of these sort of complex uh, solutions. Uh, that add on and add on to the license uh, fee as a multiplier, you can have that architecturally out of the box. Moreover, if you're doing mobile applications and you need resilience, sometimes that's uh, because you've got lots of different locations and um, they need to be able to sync up to something or they, you may need, you may have lots of users with mobile phones and they need to be able to work and collaborate on something and then sync up. Um, 
you need a platform that supports that. So I'm going to make a qualified yes. There's always a, gee, if you're doing grandmother's address book and there's, you know, one, two, three users to it and performance doesn't matter, reliability doesn't matter, scale doesn't matter, and it's never changing, um, and you've got money to spend on, uh, on, you know, on Oracle or whatever, then um, leave it in place. Um, once some of those things aren't true, then it's probably time to consider a NoSQL database. And we're getting a lot of specific questions on install um, requirements and scale limits. Uh, I assume you have links to that that we can include in the follow-up email and make sure have Yeah, absolutely. Everyone... So um, I think the, the biggest sort of install requirement that I do want to cover is, generally speaking, for, a, for something that's not just developer on your laptop, um, you're going to want three nodes uh, minimum. Um, uh, and there's various reasons for that from a clustering and reliability standpoint, but, uh, but that would be sort of your minimum uh, install would be three nodes. Um, uh, you can obviously just install it on your laptop right now if you go to couchbase.com and, and download it. But, um, uh, but uh, you know, really that's sort of the, the minimum, uh, very minimum setup. But yeah, I'll send you guys links and other uh, resources in the follow-up. I love it. Um, yeah, shoot those my way, um, and I'll make sure and get that out to the, everybody. Um, uh, and because one has to specify a bucket as well as a type in order to select from a quote-unquote table, does that mean that different buckets could host different data and that one can miss, uh, could miss data if one selects the wrong bucket? Um, so that's probably not a super common problem. The, the real setup here for the bucket, you should think of it as basically a database instance. So could you miss a table if you selected the wrong database instance? So if you did select from orders with the at sign on the old uh, uh, Oracle sort of notation from orders at some database instance and it was the wrong database instance, yes, you could miss that too. So it's, it's, it's the same sort of problem. So yes, but that's probably not a problem that, uh, that most people have. And you mentioned Erwin as a, um, a modeling tool that integrates with Couchbase. Are there any other tools as well? Uh, yeah, we have other, other things that you can use, and I'll, I'll send that in the follow-up. Erwin's sort of the one I've used since, gosh, since uh, going, oh, wow, I'm feeling old, over 20 years, um, uh, and it's probably the most common. But uh, I can send you guys some follow-up, uh, some in follow-up, but Erwin is, uh, is sort of the – the, uh, the most sort of famous uh, modeling tool, so um, so it came to mind. And can we get a NoSQL catalog into a metadata management tool, and then could we draw a lineage tree? I will have to ask someone else that. I, I'm afraid uh, I'm afraid that uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't map to my knowledge. No worries. Um... And how, uh, and what's the largest database that Couchbase can support? So we have, uh, I, I can't go into super customer specifics, but we have customers um, that have, you know, in the, in the thousands of nodes and what have you. Um, if you look on our website, you'll find some use cases from, major airlines uh, to, um, uh, to, you know, companies like Amex and what have you. Um, but, uh, but it, you know, there's not a, a theoretical limit uh, that you're likely to hit um, in that, that some of the largest companies in the world with some of the largest data volumes in the world are using Couchbase. In fact, you know, whether you know it or not, you're already a Couchbase customer because it, it's virtually impossible that, uh, that you wouldn't be, uh, be using Couchbase in some of the applications and, and companies that you do business with today. I love it. Um, and can you speak uh, a little more about how Couchbase enables shared nothing architecture? Sure. Um, so Couchbase, each, each node, well, first off, it's, uh, the clients get an updated map 
whenever they communicate with Couchbase. So um, every time they make a call, okay, the first call fails because that node went down, it fails over the next node. Um, that node then gives it an updated map of who it can talk to, uh, so smart clients. Um, you can also do this with a load balancer and, um, and uh, hit the RESTful services uh, if, uh, if you need to. Um, so first off, the smart clients basically keep the, the initial topology map or get an updated initial topology map in order to hit a, uh, uh, an active node. Uh, when a node goes down, um, then uh, Couchbase automatically rebalances the, uh, the sharding basically. So when Couchbase supports auto sharding, so whenever you add data, it automatically assigns it to at least two nodes. This is all configurable, of course, but at least two nodes. Uh, so there's at least two copies of the data at all time. Um, if a node goes down, then, um, uh, then that gets rebalanced. When the client talks to a node, um, it are, that node automatically knows where to communicate in order to get the client the data that it, uh, that it needs um, if it talks to the wrong quote unquote node. Um, there is no basically master election as there is with, with other databases. Um, uh, at all times you, um, you have this sort of updated map. Um, it hits memory. Uh, so it's a memory first architecture. So uh, things are written to disk as sort of a right behind cache. And, um, and that, that's basically the, the, the crux of how it works. Uh, there's a lot more sort of uh, uh, innate detail in uh, uh, the devils in the details and, and what have you. Oh, it's also basically asynchronous by default. I love it. There's so many great questions going on here. And uh, if you have a question for Andrew, please feel free to submit it in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen in the Q&A section. Uh, and do all major cloud platforms support Couchbase? Uh, yeah, so you can, uh, you can deploy Couchbase on any of the major cloud platforms and people have uh, and are using Couchbase today on all the major cl uh, cloud platforms. A lot of companies choose Couchbase uh, for their multi-cloud architecture because a lot of companies want to avoid having a, uh, a single cloud provider or they have reliability, data sovereignty, and global requirements um, that are not met by a single provider. So, um, so, uh, so absolutely. Um, additionally, if you want, you can use, Couch you can, uh, although it uh, just was announced and released in beta and the uh, official be, uh, the general availability will be later in the year, um, you can sign up for the beta for Couchbase Cloud, and that, uh, that'll let you have a fully managed uh, cloud-based NoSQL database. Um, one of the things that's sort of interesting about Couchbase Cloud is if you use a different uh, cloud or as a service database, they upcharge you for your, um, your underlying cloud provider. So you're buying a bunch of Amazon, you're buying a bunch of Azure, whatever. Um, uh, so they upcharge you for Amazon. So you, uh, they buy Amazon and resell it to you at an upcharge. For Couchbase, it's bring your own cloud, sort of like bring your own beer, right? Um, but uh, bring your own cloud. So you can um, provide your own cloud infrastructure, negotiate your own deal with Amazon. Um, Couchbase just charges you for the use of the database um, rather than upcharging you for that. And that's big if you're for if you're working for a a big company because they generally have a cost center. Um, a lot of our clients are significantly bigger than all of the NoSQL vendors combined, right? So if, you're, um, if your market cap, or sorry, if your IT spend is bigger than, than even a public NoSQL vendor's uh, market cap, then you can guess that you're getting a better deal from Amazon on your underlying infrastructure as a service um, uh, charge. So you want to negotiate your own deal with Amazon for the IaaS, and then you want to uh, just pay for the, the NoSQL database, and that's what Couchbase Cloud offers you. And there's a lot of different variations of this question, Andrew. You know, um, are your it, with your customers, are you seeing a uh, blended model with relational and NoSQL, or is, are they, as are your customers, majority of your customers moving exclusively to NoSQL? 
It's a mix of both. Um, I wouldn't say that most companies are like, okay, I'm going to rip out my uh, my relational database and immediately move it all to uh, to NoSQL. There are customers that are doing that. Um, they did, generally do it piecemeal. They do it as the application is being updated as opposed to an application that's just sitting there with no new users and no new, you know, not a significant up, uptake in users or, or requirements or what have you. But uh, there are companies that as a strategy, including a large financial company, uh, are consolidating on Couchbase. Um, uh, there, I would say the vast majority have both. And probably the vast majority have of large, you know, since our customers tend to be larger vendors um, or larger companies, uh, tend to um, uh, have everything. But, um, uh, but they're running their mission critical sort of applications on Couchbase. Um, uh, and yes, they also have relational databases. So combination of blended, some are actually migrating uh, uh, to Couchbase as a, a strategic uh, sort of initiative. And what do you do for end user reporting? Is there an ETL tool or is there a replicator for transaction by transaction roll off? Um, so we, there are a lot of ETL tools that will work with Couchbase. Um, and, uh, and there are a lot of, there's a large ecosystem um, that'll work with Couchbase. Uh, for that, I'm gonna kind of uh, roll you to our website uh, on, the, on the list of partners and what have you, and you can look up through a, a pretty large uh, set of, uh, of partners and tools and whatever that work with Couchbase. Um, because we support SQL, I mean, you can use uh, Tableau if you want to. You can use Excel if you want to as far as uh, 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 querying and doing reports and analysis and that sort of thing. Um, uh, so you've got quite a bit of that for just sort of monitoring and what have you. Couchbase has a pretty a uh, nice uh, built-in administration module that you can look at the pretty screens and ops monitoring, whatever, on our, um, on our uh, uh, web tool. And Andrew, what's the number one reason you find customers moving from uh, relational to no, non-relational? So the number one reason is that they, they need a performance, they've got a performance and scale requirement that they're not meeting. I would say the number two reason is cost. Um, I'd say probably tied for number two or, or possibly rising to number two is uh, reliability and the rate of change. Um, it's easier to uh, bring, to change a schema, to, to move a, a new version of an application on, um, on Couchbase than it is to um, a relational database without having to restart things, without having to rebuild a schema or rebuild uh, various things that require you to take down the cluster. So we're seeing sort of the one, two, three would be, hey, I can't meet my performance and scale requirements. Two, I don't want to pay this kind of licensing fees when you um, when you uh, when you start having lots of nodes and needing reliability and what have you. Um, and then sort of the third is that I can't meet my application change requirements um, uh, and meet my reliability requirements. Uh, with uh, with my existing database technology. And are there any scenarios, Andrew, where um, Couchbase is not recommended? Oh yeah, there's plenty. Um, while Couchbase does, uh, the, the first that comes to mind is, uh, while Couchbase does have an embedded NPP, uh, this is for like real-time analytics. It's not to go uh, source against petabytes of data um, or do something where you need a materialized uh, 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 in-dimensional cube, right? So this is, there are fewer scenarios where people are doing that. Sometimes they're doing, you know, less good analytics that are faster, um, uh, and that's where Couchbase may be appropriate where it might not have been in the past. But, but any place where you've got to do this in-dimensional cube and do this large projection and, and what have you, well, by means, Teradata and Atiza, whatever, those are your friends, but um, or maybe they're not your friends, but they're the, they're the devil you need, right? Um, but, uh, uh, but in the case of, um, but there are a lot more scenarios where Couchbase is appropriate, particularly in the, uh, in the operational space. 
I'd say if you've got, you know, again, a small, um, not changing that often application with a small number of users and, um, and it works and you don't need, you know, high reliability, high scale, high performance or whatever, then why would you migrate that to anything, right? Leave it on, on MySQL or on, on um, Microsoft Access or, or what have you. But it's really when you start having more requirements and more reliability, more performance, all that kind of stuff that you're really going to start looking at making a change. So it, just a clarification uh, it, from um, earlier, a benefit of normalization is, re, is reduced space usage, and space usage is not an issue in NoSQL because of NoSQL's architecture? I'd say it's not an issue because disk got cheap. So, um, uh, so yeah, we're going to waste way more space. If, if what you're trying to do is store your database and is and as few uh, megabytes as possible, um, then the NoSQL architecture is is not going to to be as efficient uh, for that. I just say that's not a goal the way it once was. So you're trading something off, right? You could have your database in a tiny amount of space. Um, uh, instead, you've decided that you want your database uh, to perform and scale um, uh, to a larger number of servers and be more reliable. Um, uh, so yeah, we're going to waste a little more space there. Uh, there are um, updates uh, coming in, in in our future roadmap that may uh, reduce that uh, uh, a little bit, but uh, but that can't be your top goal. If that's your top goal, that this may not be the technology for you. However, you might look at Couchbase Lite, which is a mobile embedded embedded database that still gives you sort of this uh, this style architecture, or sorry, gives you documents and 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 what have you. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I would say that uh, if if space saving space is your your most important goal, this probably won't be your favorite architecture. And is a denormalized database more difficult to enhance with uh, with new entities and attributes? No, quite the opposite. Because you can just add a um, uh, a new um, uh, you can add a new document immediately. You don't have to do a create table statements and any of that kind of stuff. Um, you can add a new um, field, you can add a new embedded uh, document, an array, whatever, to your document without up doing any kind of schema update, uh, whatever, you just go. Um, so I would say exactly the opposite. That's part of why people have been choosing uh, these sorts of databases. Andrew, I love it. And there's a lot of great questions here. A lot of these questions um, I'll get links for. There's some uh, really super, uh, uh, again, on the on the size and the install, and we'll get those links out to everybody. Um, Andrew, thank yeah, you. I'm sorry, so I, I actually can't see the questions. The uh, console crashed, my, uh, my uh, console with the questions, and it crashed uh, shortly after the presentation began. So. Oh gosh, no worries, no worries at, at all. Uh, I will get you the additional questions that um, and uh, to you and the team. Uh, I really just the remaining questions require links and information that, that you guys have available on your website and the technical details for the installs and such as and such. But uh, Andrew, thank you so much for this fantastic presentation and thanks to our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do and all the great questions. We really appreciate it. Uh, again, just a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Thursday with links to the slides and the recording along with the additional information that you all are asking for. Uh, and uh, we'll get that out to you. And I hope everybody has a great day and stay safe out there. Andrew, thanks, thank everybody. you so much. Yeah. Thank you.